It's the grandson of Right Thought. Welcome to the School of Marvelous Light. You know how you can tell when you're fully separated from this world? Because it will become clear and evident, believe me. But this is how you can tell. It's because you can no longer hold a conversation with a person of the world. And the reason why you can't hold a conversation with them is because you have two different minds and your two different minds are contrary one to another. And you will see that no matter how hard you try to not make that that way, in other words, make them contrary to one another, you try to make it not contrary. It will be because that's what Abba said it will be. He created it. That's why he said you can't serve two masters, <clears throat> two minds. In other words, you can't serve two minds. And this is how you know you're separated from that world. The world is consumed with distraction. And distraction is what keeps you away from the spiritual mind. The distractions separate you from the spiritual mind, from being spiritually minded. And you may say, what is the difference between the carnal mind and the spiritual mind? The spiritual mind is waiting on the word. The carnal mind is too busy to wait on the word. It's too busy working. And that's why you see the children of Israel liberated out of Egypt so that they could serve the Lord their God. Now, it would be wise that you understand this anomaly of the Israelites on the earth. Why are they separated? Why are they set apart people? A holy people means a set apart people unto God. God has people to do work on the earth. And then he has a people to wait on his word. That people is Israel. That's why in Israel's records, you always see them say, the word of the Lord came unto me. And the word of the Lord came to a spiritually minded person. That's why they were prophets, you see, spiritually minded, waiting on the word of the Lord. And where were they usually when they were waiting? They were separated from society. See how once you understand this principle, it makes your life make sense. It lets you know who you are, what group you are a part of, what flock you are a part of. That's why Christ said, for so they did to the prophets. That's why he makes that comparison with them and you. Take the prophets for a, a example, he says. Well, why? If you're not part of that group, why? How could they be an example to you? When you're going to do anything and somebody's going to do an example, they're going to demonstrate how to do it because you're going to follow and do the exact same thing. Well, he's telling you to look to the prophets as your, as your example for patience, faith. That's why they were always separated from the people <laughs> because they were waiting on the word. You can't be working in the 3D if you're waiting on the word. You're a set apart person to do that. That's why the nations hated Israel it should all make sense to you now. Did the people hate the prophets? Well, then it makes sense that Israel, the prophet of God, 
is hated by the world, by the nations. Because they don't labor in the 3D. They wait on the words of Abba, meanwhile being taken care of. How do you know this is your people? Because Yahushua said he is not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So he's only sent to the people that knew what they were doing and then went astray. Lost sheep of this particular house, house of the prophets. In other words, the house of people who wait on the words of Abba. That's their labor. That's what they do. They labor in the kingdom. They labor in spirit. And so since the world can't comprehend that, they hate it because they perceive that it's actually hatred against God. It's laziness. <laughs> Because you're not working the way they're working, they become envious, they become hateful toward you. And this is how you know you're separated from the world. You see that? But little did you know, your life and what's going on in it is already demonstrated in the scriptures so that you could be helped in your time of need. You see, because the same word that spoke that spoke to those prophets when they wrote those books is the same word that speaks to you today. And there be some who are set apart from the world, who don't labor, who don't labor in the 3D, but they wait on the words of Abba. And they dwell and they live by every word that proceeds out of his mouth. In other words, they live by his commandments. Once you're set apart from the world and you're no longer laboring the 3D, you have to live on the kindness of others. The kindness of others is the law that Christ taught us. So if you see a brother in need, he needs something to drink, and you give him something to drink, then you've done it for me. You see somebody naked without clothing, and you give them clothes to wear, you've done it for me. You see? And people don't hear that. So when they see the person in need, they see that person in need. They don't see Christ. <laughs> they don't see him. But the scriptures already told you where Christ is. It's not outward. The kingdom of heaven is within you. And so if you're, if you're laboring in the kingdom, as Christ said, the laborers are few. It just means that there are a few set apart people who have stopped their 3D labors. Like the book of Hebrews said, they've come to Mount Zion. They've, they've left Egypt already. They, come, they came to Mount Zion to be cleansed. And now they're waiting to go into their promised land, standing at the precipice looking in. And what happens when that moment comes for you? Those giants appear. Those same giants that, that the Israelites shuddered when they saw them and said, we'd be like grasshoppers. See, I told you, that means Israel, you set apart people who don't labor, labor in the 3D. You don't have earthly wealth, earthly riches, and earthly gain like that. <laughs> so you don't have political pool. You don't have any type of diplomatic power. You don't have any type of status so compared to those people who do have those things you seem like a grasshopper <laughs> and so since you've read that and you know that that's that represents you then you know not to have that mindset of i'm just a grasshopper you know to be like Yahushua. And Caleb, who said, I'm going to take my land. I'm going to take my portion that was promised to me. I don't know about the rest of you Israelites, but as for me and my house, I know where we're going to go. And I know what we're going to do. And so it is today. There's a choice that has to be made. I told you that the carnal mind is enmity against God's hatred against God. 
the carnal mind hates spirituality at all. <laughs> it hates it. It's too busy trying to do something here in this temporal world. And the carnal mind can't be convinced that this is temporary, even though he's seeing every day that it is. A young person sees an old person and thinks, well, it'll be a long time before I get to that point, so I'm just going to still focus on all of this vanity that I'm focused on. You'll be there before you know it. If you're blessed to even make it there, because tomorrow is not promised. And so since we know tomorrow is not promised, and we consider what Yahushua taught us, which is take no thought for tomorrow, well, it's hard to live like that when you're earthly and you're, and you're carnal. Got to get up at 5 o'clock and go to work. Then I have to be at this meeting at 9 o'clock. Then I have to go and take the kids to such and such. Then I have to go and hit the gym. And then after the gym, I have to go back to this meeting I have to make on the other side of town over there. And then I have to go... Uh, Make, do these reports before I go to sleep and then I have to go to sleep and I have to get up do it all over again and then maybe if I have a, a, a five minute break then maybe I could uh, maybe say a prayer that's the carnal mind bogged down with earthly vanity and no matter how many old people tell you it's vanity you just keep right on chasing it and chasing it and chasing it and chasing it well, the chasers, their mindset uh, doesn't make it possible to have a conversation with them because of that. Chasing, racing, hustling, moving. You're, you're chilling. You're resting. <laughs> you're calm. You're peaceful. Two totally different worlds, and you just have to decide which one you're going to live in. That's it. Why do you think Abba told us that, that what you can see is temporal, but what you can't see is eternal? That word that's talking to you that I'm telling you spiritual people wait to listen to, that's eternal. <laughs> My word abideth forever. So then, if I'm constantly listening to it, then that means I will abide forever. Well, he already said, you shall live by every word. You shall live by every word. But people are not listening to the word. You see that? They're not, they're not waiting. Because like I told you, you don't know when it's coming. Christ says, I come as a thief in the night. What does that mean? That means when he speaks his word to you, if you're not prepared to hear it, you won't hear it. And it'll pass you right on by. And you won't know what's going on. You won't know the truth and be set free from what the next illusion that's coming is giving to you. Because y'all all know that there's always some illusion coming trying to shake up your emotions, make you feel some type of way. Try to get you involved in it and get you to pay attention to it so you're not paying attention to the word. You're caught off guards, like Christ said. Caught, un caught unawares when he comes. The word, that is. But if you're sitting there like this, silently just waiting, then when the word comes, you'll hear it. Or in other words, when the breeze comes, you'll feel it. You'll enjoy it. You'll get the benefits of it. That man that's laboring, that's sweating like a mug, that breeze blew. He didn't even notice it because he's just working so hard. He didn't even take a moment to feel it or get the benefits of it. You see what I'm trying to say? That's why he said those who labor, labor in vain. I told you, I would use his people Israel to show you this principle. Okay, y'all want to work like the other nations? Then go work. And you're going to work for free. Now, read about Egypt. Make them slave in brick and mortar. As a matter of fact, make their workload double. 
since they think they're about to go out there and go be free and go serve their God. How are they going to eat? Now, see, this is what it's all about, Israel. This is how they got you held down. Watch the Egyptians talking shit about you. They about to go out in the wilderness. <laughs> what are they going to eat out there? We provide them all of their food. We provide them all of their housing. Am I telling any lies about this, guys? About the Israelites in Egypt? We provide for them everything that they get. So then, what are they going to do when they run out there in the middle of the desert? They'll die out there. It's better that we at least be able to make some money off of them instead of just kicking them out there and letting them die. Well, they went out there, didn't they? And then they got hungry. Now, I want you to hear this real good. I know you all know it, but you need to really hear it. They got hungry. Now, stop right there. You have decided to leave your Egypt because each one of us has a personal Egypt holding us captive until we break free of it. So you decide I'm leaving Egypt. And then you go into the wilderness. Uh-oh, now you start saying, what am I going to eat? My money has run out. My refrigerator's empty. Uh-oh, what am I going to do? See? It's no different is what I'm telling you. See how this should comfort you? <laughs> if you're the one that's leaving Egypt, wondering how you're going to eat, how you're going to be able to pay for, for your house, how are you going to be able to pay for this, how are you going to pay for this, how are you going to pay for that? So did the Israelites when they went into the wilderness. Well, they got hungry, and Abba brought manna down from heaven. Now, <clears throat> What other nation has been fed by manna from heaven? What people on the earth other than Israel? See why, why you're set apart? <laughs> See? Well, that's you in your life. The manna will rain down from heaven and it will sustain you and it will be enough for that day. Just like the Israelites were told to take the manna and take what you need that day. Don't worry about tomorrow. Whose words are those? That would be Christ. See? He was the one telling them that from that cloud and from that pillar of fire. How else can you explain that as well? This protect, this supernatural protection around them. Keeping the... Israelites separated from the Egyptians. Well, same it is with your life then. If you by faith believe you are the Israelite and not the Egyptian. <laughs> Shoot, there shouldn't be no discrepancy in your mind on whether you're the slave or whether you're the slave master. There shouldn't be no discrepancy and it ain't no shame in telling the truth about the answer either. Slave can't be free if you don't think he's a slave. If he's a slave and think he's free, well, then you can't set him free. Hope you hear that. Christ said, I came to set the captives free. And this is what he means. His word said, come out of there. Now, I'm a living example of this. This is why I'm not a hypocrite of telling you all this. 2016, he said, come away from there. And so I did. And I have not gone back. So, and here I am today talking to you still. I still have shelter. I still have food to eat every day. I still have the things that I need every day. So then he's doing the same thing for me that he did for the Israelites in the wilderness, you see. So if he's doing the same thing for me that he did for the children of Israel in the wilderness, then he's going to do the same thing for me, uh, that part where they got brought into the promised land. He's going to do that part too. That's why he said, I'm going to, the day shall come when I shall do that good thing that I have promised to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. And they shall dwell in their own land. You see that there? 
where the builders, where, where what's built there was not made with hands, yet it's already built. <laughs> you see that there? See, because to build would take labor. Nope. You're resting people. You are the people of the Shabbat. You see? The other nations are the nations of the work week. And that's why they hate the Shabbat. But every every nation got, got their day. Every dog got their day, they say. <laughs> every nation got their day. And Israel shall indeed have his. That day of rest that we all long for. That's the people of Israel's natural disposition and natural state of living. That's why you're constantly being forced into these captivities of labor. Because people get pissed off that you won't work, that you don't work, that you don't labor in vain. They're like, shit, we're laboring in vain. You labor in vain. No, it's not what I am. That's not what I am. I'm set apart. Take it up with Abba. He said that. He said, I'm above all nations that are upon the face of the earth if I keep his commands. So all I have to do is keep his commands. And I will be set above all. Yes, rest is better than work. Wouldn't you all agree? If you didn't agree, why y'all love going on vacation so much? And how come... You be counting down the days of your vacation. You be having two weeks vacation. The first day you feel all good. Like, I got time to get my tan on, to get in the sun, to show my body off. Girl, look at my six pack. You're doing all this dancing around and everything, feeling all good that first day. But then some days and days and days go by. Feel like two days. Some days and days and days went by. Now you got two days left on a vacation. You're like, oh, oh man. You've been chilling with Linda. From the bar, y'all been having a good time. Now you got to go back to reality. You like, oh no, I got to fly back to New York and go back to the job. Damn. Yep. Bye bye, Linda. Bye bye, Linda. Crying. You like, Linda? Listen, listen, Linda. Linda, listen. Don't cry, Linda. Linda, listen. I have to go. <laughs> you singing Trey songs to her and shit. I don't wanna leave. <laughs> But I gotta go right now. <laughs> That's the way it is when you're in the world. You're trying to make that last forever. Not your work day. You ain't trying to make your work day last forever. Matter of fact, the way you was on that vacation crying about the days dwindling down, you're the opposite at, about your work days. You're watching the work days dwindle down like, yes, 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 I'm getting one day closer to my vacation. <laughs> Next thing you know, your vacation's over, you're back at work, and you're back grumpy. Your coworkers are like, hey, 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 man, how was your vacation? You're like, yeah, it was good, man. Way better than being here and shit. I had to shovel out my driveway to get my car out and let my car warm up for 25 minutes before I headed out this morning. He's got some burn on the back of his neck and shit. <laughs> you can't serve two masters, you see? You're trying to, but you can't. And all you got to do is decide. Because people, I told you, a whole bunch of people say they serve Christ, but yet they're not doing what he said. They're not doing it. If they really took inventory of their selves and said, wait a minute, take no thought of what you shall eat or drink or put on. How can you subtract that from what he's told you to do? That's my question. How do people just subtract that? And be hypocritos, cucarachas. How? Because it says it. But the carnal mind don't hear that. It can't hear that. It's like I go to my job and people really think I'm cool when I'm wearing these shoes, when I'm wearing these brand of jeans and this type of glasses. Everybody thinks I'm the shit. And you're telling me. Don't worry about that. Matter of fact, be more concerned with the contents of my heart. Yeah, people don't really care about my heart, though. Of course they don't, because they're carnally minded, which is death. But Abba is concerned with your heart. He told you he is. 
And it's amazing that that's not enough for people in this world. You tell somebody that God loved them, it's not enough. <laughs> They're still, they still feel hated. I found out God loved me and I was special to God. And I read those words. I have loved thee. I'm like, what? <laughs> it did something to me. He told me I was special, but that made me feel special that he loved me. And then so I said, let me test and see how much he does. And then he proves it to me. And by showing how much he does, I mean going out there in the wilderness. Going out there to meet him. And to be with him where he is, because that's where he is in this world, separated from it. That's why John the Baptist dwelt in the wilderness. That's why Yahushua went out in the wilderness. That's why our grandson went out in the wilderness. I didn't know I would go out there in the 40. I had no idea that I would do that. But when the days came closer for me to go out in the 40, I knew that I was going through something in my life that was thrusting me out of it. I was literally at that time in my life being thrust out of every relationship that I had. Sometimes willingly and sometimes unwillingly. And when I mean every relationship, I mean every one of them. You can't lie anymore. You can't accept lies anymore. You can't tolerate it anymore. So when you're hanging around all these people who just lie, you have to separate yourself. When you're around people who won't be honest with you, you have to separate yourself because it's too heartbreaking. You have, you, you, you are around people who can't ask for forgiveness, who won't ask for forgiveness, but want you to come hang around and smile and laugh but they've hurt you. <laughs> they've betrayed you. They've backstabbed you. And they want you to take it with a smile and get ready for another knife if they feel like that's what they got to do. You're going to be their pin cushion. You're going to be their, their, what y'all call it? And you just beat the thing up. What's the word for that, y'all? Well, I'm just going to have to stick with pincushion right now. You're punching bag. That's what's the word. <laughs> You're punching bag. They just want you to be their emotional punching bag. When they feel bad, they can take it out on you, and you'll react, and you'll cry, and you'll scream, and you'll say, oh, why are you being like this? I didn't do anything wrong to you. And they can release all of that vitriol upon you and vomit all of that disgust they got inside of them off on you. So you can be their vomit bucket, their spittoon. Well, when you leave, they can't do that anymore. They got the vomit in their mouth like this, looking for somewhere to vomit it, and they can't. And they got to swallow that shit down. They got to swallow it. <coughs> yeah, let it burn. Let it burn. That's right. It's like Usher say, you got to let it burn, man. We ain't got nowhere to vomit no more. Why do you think Abba uses these things? When he says, just like a dog returns to his vomit, man. You tell a carnal-minded person some spiritual stuff, and they sit there all in awe with their eyes glittering and everything. Wow, I've never heard anything like this. I've never heard anybody teach the Bible like this. This is amazing. No one knows the Bible like this person knows it. And then they turn right around and go back to their carnal life, their vom their vomit start asking you about a whole bunch of crap that doesn't profit anything. Hey, did you hear about what happened with Kai Sanat? Hey, man, did you hear, did you see what happened to I Show Speed's eye? Oh, man. Hey, did you hear what happened with that girl, man, that, that, that that's got killed in Mexico, man? Oh, man, you should have heard about that. Oh, did you hear about what happened with P. Diddy, man? Yeah, man, he got a lawsuit, Cassie, man. She said some stuff about him, man. Dang. Okay, now when you're done hearing that, what did it profit and elevate your life? How did it do it? How did it elevate you? 
It didn't. So then it was not profitable. But the words of Abba, are they profitable to hear? <laughs> are they? He says, my words are life. They are spirit 